Hey folks, Dale Davidson here. Look, 18,700 subscribers uh, to date. Thank you so very much. Love my veterans and the spouses of my veterans and, and my, my subscribers. Thank you all so much. I, I hope I'm helping you, you folks out in all this. So look, today we're, I'm going to talk about the potential to obtain an earlier effective date under non-PACT Act rules. You know, I've done a PACT Act video and I'll um, put that up on the screen at the end. But we're talking about non-PACT Act rules. So when service connection is granted for a PACT Act presumptive condition, okay, normally there's a change in a statute or regulation that creates an entitlement under the VA disability benefit rules, okay? So you're entitled, as a claimant, you're entitled to VA benefits based upon the change, usually no earlier than the effective date of the rule change or the statute, okay? For example, the PACT Act was uh, signed into law on December, excuse me, August the 10th of 2022. So that would be your effective date unless you stay tuned for more. And that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to say, how do we get an effective date earlier than the PACT Act? Because if you can get an earlier date earlier than the PACT Act, that just is more money in your pocket. So, if you had a claim for service connection, uh, let's just say for disease X, pending before the VA on the effective date of a change in the law, and let's say that it was August the 10th of 2022, that's the PACT Act, okay? And the VA granted your claim based upon the new presumptions under the PACT Act, then the effective date for your service-connected disability or your disease would be no earlier than the effective date of the PACT Act, August 10 of 2022. Even if your claim had been pending for years due to the date uh, of the change, okay? So if you had a claim pending and along comes the PACT Act, because of the presumptions under the PACT Act, your effective date would be August 10th of 2022, not prior to, because you didn't have those presumptions back then. But we're gonna show you how to correct that. So, the only way the, the VA could award service-connected disability benefits for your disease for a period prior to the effective date. In our example, the effective date is the PACT Act date of August 10, 2022. It's gonna be based upon a service connection. And we've talked about Nexus a lot in these videos. That is that your uh, exposure, your injury, your disability is directly related to your service, okay? And it's other than the new presumption, okay? So it's easy if you got a presumptive disability. It's hard if you don't have a presumptive disability because there's some more hoops you've got to jump through. So these effective date rules for change in the law apply to claims by, by you as a veteran for service-connected disability compensation and claims by your spouse, your survivors, okay, for DIC that are covered by the presumptive service connection provisions, okay? All of these dates I'm throwing out is, is pretty complicated, so let me give you another example to kind of help illustrate everything. Let's say that you served in Iraq in 2008. Because you served in 2008 in Iraq, you are what they refer to as a covered veteran. So in 2020, you developed sarcoidosis. Okay, don't know exactly what that is. Okay, but in February of 2021, you filed a claim for the VA or with the VA for your service connected disability, arguing that you were injured while you were in Iraq in 2008. And so, you know, this is the direct theory, meaning there's a service connection, a, a nexus here saying that I served in Iraq, I was exposed to toxins or burn pits or whatever it was. We're not under the PACT Act, 
But because of my exposure to these toxins, I have developed this disease. Let's go further and say that the VA uh, regional office denied your claim. And so you're pretty stre uh, strong willed and you say, well, I'm going to appeal. So you appeal and then lo and behold, here it is, August the 10th of 2022, the PACT Act becomes law. Okay. So under the PACT Act, as a covered veteran, you are now entitled to presumptive service for your disability. So the VA would grant your disability based upon the PACT Act presumptives as of August the 10th of 2022. But you need to have this granted back because you filed your claim in 2021. So you're entitled to additional compensation. But the VA says, no, nope, I'm sorry, you didn't have the presumptive then, presumptions then uh, of the exposure. Therefore, we're going to just go with the PACT Act and your effective date is 2022. Well, how do you get around that August 10, 2022 date? Let's say that you're able to convince the VA that you're entitled to your service connection under the law in effect prior to the PACT Act. Because, for example, you satisfied each of the elements, and we've talked about those elements before, necessary to prove direct service connection. For example, a evidence that says that you were exposed. Your medical opinion says it's as least likely as not that your service in Iraq in 2008 and your exposure to these chemicals were the cause of your disability. In this case, you would argue that direct connection, that your disability was caused by your toxic exposure, and the VA should award service-connected disability on a direct basis, meaning effective February of 2021, the date that they received your claim. Okay, that's what, uh, February, that's 16, 18 months of additional compensation that you would be entitled to February of 2021 versus August of 2022. That's a big chunk of, of change that you're leaving on the table if you can, if you don't argue this direct service connection. Now, for some conditions, you could also obtain service connection under different theories, okay? Through the PACT Act, the, that's the presumption, but the PACT Act does not make prior regulations obsolete. So the, the nexus part of that is not clear. This is just dealing with presumptions only. So if you can establish entitlement to service connection under the old rules, you're entitled to an earlier effective date and more compensation. You see how that works? So if we can still go under the old rules despite the new rules, you're entitled to additional compensation. All right, let me give you another example, okay? Assume, and I know we're not supposed to assume, that you pursued your claim for asthma since filing back in January of 2022. And I'm going to assume again, I know we're not supposed to assume, that in March of 2023, a, year, a little over a year, the VA issued a decision on your claim. Now, if your claim can be granted under the... August 2021 regulations, you'd be entitled to an effective date of the August 2021, the date the regulation for the old asthma presumption went into effect. But if your claim can't be granted under the old regulations, then we go under the new regulations, the PACT Act, which is August of 10 of 2022. So you see, dealing with different these regulations, it, it really is rocket science. And so 
we want to maximize the benefits to our veterans and their spouses. So we, we're going to look to see exactly what can we do to get an, the earliest effective date as possible. Sometimes it's not always possible, but we try. Okay. So let's say that you're a covered veteran, but don't qualify for a presumption of service connection. Can you still use the presumption of exposure in the PACT Act to obtain a favorable medical opinion? And absolutely yes. Absolutely. Look, I'm a belts and suspenders guy. What you need when you're when you're filing a claim, I believe that you should be, even if you've got the presumption, I think you are better served by uh, providing medical evidence saying that it's as like least likely as not that your condition was caused by your service. So even if your disability is not eligible for the presumption service connection, the PACT Act presumption of exposure for covered veteran can still help you. Okay. In other words, if the connection between your condition and your service is not already presumed to be law, you can still use the PACT Act to your advantage. Okay. So unlike veterans with that are under the PACT Act with the presumptions, meaning that their service connection is proved, is, is presumed, we don't have to prove it. We're having to prove the service connection here. So we need to have our medical expert, our medical opinion stating that your condition is at least as likely as not caused by your exposure in service to toxins or whatever it may be, burn pits, uh, cart paint, whatever it may be. And your doctor is more likely to provide positive medical nexus opinion for a covered veteran, okay? because you're showing them that you've been exposed. Here's the list under the PACT Act. I'm not really technically covered under the PACT Act, but here's the list of, of disabilities, and I was there. So work with your physician as far as making sure that he or she understands that even though you're not under the presumptions of the PACT Act that you can still use the PACT Act to your advantage. So what do we do? Well, we suggest that you give your doctors a list of toxic uh, substances, chemicals, airborne hazards, whatever it was, uh, to which you were exposed, okay? And to which you were presumed exposed, okay? Likewise, give your medical provider a list of the toxic chemicals under the PACT Act to which it's the presumption arises, okay? Your medical person can then help you establish service connection for the non-presumptive condition by addressing whether it is as least likely or not that your medical condition, your disability resulted from one or more of the toxins that you were exposed to, in our case, in Iraq in 2008. If you've got medical literature that's showing there's a relationship between your current disability and one or more of the listed toxins, then by all means, give that to your doctor or submit that to the VA, you know, from medical journals. I mean, Google is a wonderful research tool to list you can type in uh, your condition and the different chemicals that you think that you were uh, exposed to, and you'll come up with a slew of, of different reports and uh, studies and things of that nature that have been done to show whether or not your condition uh, is actually been caused uh, or is at least likely is not caused by your toxic exposure. It's very important because the, the persuasive value of your expert medical person, as well as the expert literature that's out there, is invaluable. I mean, that we're trying to help the VA make the determinant of nexus with your service, okay? And it's 
Even better if your medical expert would even cite some of these reports. So by all means, give the reports to the doctors. And I know I'm hearing it right now that, hey, these doctors don't want to be bothered by it, whatever. But I think that if you would just have a, a candid conversation with your doctor and, I mean, heck, write it out for them and see if they would be willing to put it in their medical terms as far as their their nexus argument uh, that your condition was as least likely or not caused by your exposure. So, what about the PACT Act requirement related to VA claims, exams, and medical opinions for toxic exposed veterans? As I previously stated, you know, even if you don't fit the definition of covered veteran, the PACT Act can still help you in your claim for service connection based upon in-service exposure to toxins. Now the act, there's this new rules, okay, to guide the VA in determining whether you were exposed to toxins when you file your claim. There's a, a thing, it's, it's called ILER. It's the uh, Individual Longitudinal Exposure Record. So whenever you file a claim with the VA, they're going to look to gather all evidence of your disability and toxic exposure during your activity, or your, your activity, your active service. Okay, so the VA uh, will consider everything, and they call it the ILER, the Individual Longitudinal Exposure Record. Okay, but if there's nothing there, then you're going to have to provide evidence, maybe buddy statements, uh, records from uh, uh, other kinds of documents uh, and, and evidence to show that, yeah, I was there, I was there in the burn pit area, or I was there wherever, wherever you were exposed in order for them to build the record to say, yes, this veteran was actually exposed and we've got all the medical evidence and we've got even evidence from you know national health institutes and studies and all that showing that these toxins that he's claiming he was exposed to cause his uh, caused his disability so when the VA goes in to process your claim based on toxic exposure they're supposed to consider all evidence of record okay which would be your ILA report if you've got one, service treatment records, your personal records, your C file basically, okay? And then if you were exposed, they want to look at the location of the exposure, what was there? What what are the known toxic exposures in the areas in which you were stationed, okay? And then they're going to look at your medical records, your medical expert records, hopefully and then expert reports and testimony all of those things are going to look at the entire record to make sure that you know they're making a good decision it's up to the process claim people to liberally construe all the evidence in favor of the veteran so that's why it's important to give them as much information as possible now the pact act also requires the the va to develop the evidence in a disability claim by providing you with a CMP exam, a medical exam, and obtaining the medical nexus opinion if your claim is pre-PACT Act. So this type of development is required whenever the record contains evidence of a disability, evidence of that you were in this area in a toxic exposure activity, maybe you were grinding paint off or painting um, with cork, uh, maybe you were in the burn pit areas, wherever you were, they're going to look to see what all of the, the record, your, your toxic exposure risk activity, they call it. Sometimes, because toxins are so volatile, so to speak, you file a claim for a condition, you don't know what caused it. You know, so you don't know if what I have was explicitly attributable to my toxic exposure or not so what do you do but maybe your claim reasonably raises the issue of association with toxic exposure or if there's evidence of the record of participation in a toxic exposure risk activity now 
that's where your C&P exam and your medical nexus opinion uh, would be required. Okay, so any military service qualifies for a presumption of exposure uh, must be considered to involve a toxic exposure risk activity, including all locations and other exposures based on herbicides, radiation, location of the Persian Gulf War, mustard gas, all of those, Camp Lejeune, okay, and burn pits, okay. The VA has also got to request disability exams for veterans who are entitled to a presumption of service connection for their disability, okay. Now, there are a few exceptions to that requirement, but we're not going to cover those uh, today. So, once an exam is ordered, the examination has got to address whether it is at least likely as not that your nexus, that your service is connected to your disability or your exposure is connected to your disability. So that's what the VA is trying to get at with respect to the CNP exam and the medical nexus opinion. So if you're seeking service connection for exposure to toxins during your service, okay, and you have a condition, a medical condition or disability that, that's not under the presumptive list, maybe you can't use the presumptive list in fact, okay, then we encourage you, Google this. It's training letter 10-03, okay? Read that. It's very informative. Uh, you can provide lay statements regarding your presence near burn pits, okay, or other toxic uh, places. You can submit um, your own medical expert opinions, believing that your condition is related to your exposure. So you're not just limited by what's in the PACT Act, but go go look at this training letter. Again, it's training letter 10-03, and so that will give you some good insight as to your toxic exposures. Now, if you're using that VA training letter, you know, make sure that you're going to provide rationale for your opinion that that training letter is is applicable to your situation and looking at any kind of relevant presumptions as your exposure as part of this rationale. So if you served in Southwest Asia, Afghanistan, Syria, Uzbekistan, Somalia, and some other places since 1990, let me ask you a question. Have you been diagnosed with any condition of your respiratory cardiopulmonary, sorry, uh, neurological or autoimmune systems? Or what about diagnosis of skin disorders? If so, you should submit a claim for the diagnosed condition based upon exposure to burn pits and for particulate matter, along with any kind of lay statements you may have describing your exposure, a statement uh, in support of your claim pointing out the PACT Act and or the VA regulations that presume that you were exposed to these fine particulate matters, okay? Uh, if you served in an area that qualifies for one of those presumptions, uh, if you've been diagnosed with any disorder but exhibit signs or symptoms involving the respiratory, your cardiopulmonary, your neurological, uh, your autoimmune system or involving skin, you should submit a claim for service connection and rely among other things, again, this is important, other things, the rules discussed here in this video as well as the VA rules uh, the theory of burn pit exposure, and especially the VA training letter 10-3. So I know this was a long video, but thank you for bearing with me. It's important. It's very technical. I tried to explain it in simple terms, but this is a very complicated topic. Just know that the point being is that even though you have presumptions under the PACT Act, if you file prior to the PACT Act, we want to get that effective date as to when you file. We don't want to use that effective date of the PACT Act. 
Hey folks, thank you for watching this long video, uh, but thank you so much. Hey, look, check out this video, Disability Benefits for Gulf War and Iraq War Veterans, talking about the PACT Act and those presumptions. So until next time, have a blessed day.